Hi, everybody. How are you doing? If you're new here, I highly recommend you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below to not miss a single one of our new lessons. And don't forget, if you like this lesson, please show us some support by hitting that like button. Also, take your fluency to the next level with our lessons. Lesson 30. Some more shopping. Mr. Priestley, I think it will be useful to know something more about shopkeepers and what they sell in their shops. Frida, your conversation at the grocer's sounded so real that I am sure you are used to shopping of that kind. Frida, well, my friend Mary Gardner and I have a little flat together and we both do the shopping, generally on Saturday morning. Mr. Priestley, today is Monday so you probably remember what you and Mary did on Saturday morning. Could you tell us? Frida, I shall be very glad to do so. You will remember that I bought some bacon, tea, and so on, there was really a lot more. I have the bill here, so you can see exactly what I got at the grocer's. While I was there Mary went to Bones the Butcher's for a small joint of beef and half a leg of lamb, about two to three pounds, and then to the green grocer's, which is also a fruiterer's, for two pounds of eating apples and two pounds of cooking apples, a dozen oranges, one pound of mixed nuts, two pounds of beans, eight pounds of potatoes and a good-sized cabbage. I called round at the dairy to pay our bill for the milk, one pint daily, the cream and the new laid eggs, one dozen, that had been sent to our flat during the last week. Mary went to the fishmongers to get some herrings for our supper. We went together to the baker's and paid for the bread that we had had, two brown loaves, two white loaves and six rolls, and bought one pound of fruit cake and half a dozen small cakes, he's a confectioner as well as a baker, and then went home, feeling rather tired. Mr. Priestley, well, Frida, you have certainly given us some useful vocabulary there. Pop, a confectioner is a man who makes cakes, isn't he, sir? Mr. Priestley, yes. Pop, good. Then I know a story about a confectioner. Mr. Priestley, all right, Pop, let us hear it. Pop, well, it's really about two confectioners in the main street of Loden Cross, where my Uncle Tom lived. Their shops were just opposite each other and there was great rivalry between them. One day one of them put a big notice in his shop window. Try our cake at two-thirds a pound. To pay more is to be robbed. About an hour later his rival put a notice in his shop window. Try our cake at two-sixths a pound. To pay less is to be poisoned. I'm sorry I can't tell you one about a butcher, but I can give you a short conversation I heard between Uncle Tom and the butcher at Loden Cross. Tom never got married, and he used to do all his own cleaning and cooking and shopping. One day I went with him to the butcher's, and this was the conversation that I heard. Uncle Tom, is the beef tender? Butcher, he'd just fallen in love with Daisy Bell, one of the girls in the village, tender, Tom? It's as tender as a woman's heart. Uncle Tom, oh. Then I'll take a pound of sausages, instead. Mr. Priestley, now, Pedro, suppose you tell us something about men's shops. Pedro, well, I often go to a men's outfitter when I want new gloves or ties, socks, handkerchiefs, or shirts. The one I go to in Regent Street has also hats and collars, and all of very good quality. Mr. Priestley, what size do you take in hats, collars and gloves? Pedro, oh, yes, the English sizes are not the same as most continental ones. I take size 7 in hats. 15.5 in collars, 8 in gloves and 8.5 in shoes. Pop, you sound as if you were bigger round the neck than round the head. Pedro, another shop I go to frequently is the tobacconist. I always have the same kind of cigarette, and handmade Virginia, though he has excellent Turkish and Egyptian cigarettes too, and he has all the popular kinds in packets of 10 and 20 and boxes of 50 and 100. He has two a good choice of lighters, cigarette holders, and cigarette cases. 
If you are a pipe smoker you can get good pipes and pouches, and he has an excellent quality of pipe tobacco in 1 ounce packets and 2 ounces and 4 ounces tins. Then I went yesterday to the newsagent to pay my bill for papers. He is a bookseller and and stationer as well as newsagent, and I gave him an order for a new book that I wanted. I had borrowed it from the library, but I liked it so much that I wanted to have a copy of my own. At the same time I ordered three or four boxes of writing paper and a hundred envelopes. Then I went along Piccadilly to the fine art galleries. I had seen a watercolor that I liked, so I had it sent to my rooms. It was about one o'clock by this time and I had an appointment for lunch at the Ritz with a friend, so I turned in there, and that was my morning. Mr. Priestley, very good. Now, Lucille, can you tell us a little about your shopping? Lucille, I went to Bond Street one day last week to have a look at a hat that I had been told had just arrived from Paris. I tried it on and liked it very much, so I bought it. I needed a new pair of dancing shoes, my present ones are rather worn and I am going to a dance tonight. I saw a beautiful pair of walking shoes and snake skin, so I bought those as well and had them sent to my address. Then I remembered that I wanted a new toothbrush. There was a chemist's near, so I went in. They had some new face cream and a face powder that the chemist said was very good, but I never use anything but Guerlain from Paris. I always get my lipstick from Paris, too, but unfortunately I lost my lipstick yesterday, the last one that I had, so I had to buy a new one there. It is quite good, but not like my Parisian one. My watch doesn't go very well just now, it has been gaining about 10 minutes a day for some time, and every now and then it stops altogether for no reason at all. I took it to a watchmaker just off Bond Street so that he could examine it. He said it wanted cleaning, so I left it with him. I called in at Cartier's the jewelers to buy a birthday present for my sister, Marie. They showed me some lovely earrings, necklaces and bracelets, but I finally decided on a very pretty brooch of diamonds and rubies set in platinum, and that completed my shopping. Hob, when I hear Lucille talking about diamonds and rubies and platinum, it reminds me of something that happened a long time ago. Uncle Albert was just beginning to make his fortune and he had been invited to a big party in Manchester. The invitation was for Mr. Albert Hobdell and Lady. Uncle Albert hadn't a wife so he took his mother with him, my grandmother, he was very proud of his mother, even if she wasn't a lady. Well, they happened to sit next to a woman, or should I say, a lady, who was very anxious that you should know how much jewelry she had and how wealthy she was. I clean my diamonds with warm water, she said, my rubies with red wine, my emeralds with brandy and my sapphires with fresh milk. What do you do, she said, turning to Albert's mother. Oh. I don't clean mine at all, she said smilingly, when they get dirty, I just throw them away. I just throw them away. Exercises Exercise 1. Use the following in sentences. Flat, noun, rival, quality. Bill, rob, packet. Joint, poison, borrow. Dairy, tender, brooch. Exercise 2. Use the following phrases from Lesson 30 in sentences of your own. And so on, to fall in love, try it on, make his fortune, very anxious, get dirty, you are used to, you used to. Exercise 3. What can you buy it? A men's outfitters. A jeweler's. A greengrocer's. A tobacconist's. A chemist's. A dairy. A stationer's. A grocer's. A baker's. Exercise 4. Where would you go to buy? A pencil, writing paper. A brooch, a lady's hat. Cream, a watch. A toothbrush, a ring. A pair of socks, a cabbage. Apples, biscuits. A packet of cigarettes, a piece of beef. A watercolor, a herring. A shirt, a loaf, a daily paper, a book. Exercise 5. Retell Hobbes stories of
1. Uncle Albert's mother. 2. The notice outside the confectioner's shop. 3. Uncle Tom and the butcher. Composition exercises. 1. Retell the account of the shopping done by each of the characters in the piece you have just read. Use as many as possible of the words connected with each shop. 2. Describe a visit to some other shop not mentioned in the extract. Dear friends, thank you very much for your support, for watching and for liking. I wish you success in learning English. Subscribe to our channel, and good luck.